we are finally going to take our drawings and make them 3D. We are going to learn what drawings work well and which don't. We are going to learn how to use the Extrude tool, and we are going to begin to understand the Inventor workflow. Inventor's workflow starts as a 2D sketch. That 2D sketch needs to be a closed shape. The next step is to extrude the 2D shape. This is kind of like using a cookie cutter. It will take whatever shape you have drawn and pull it into the third dimension. It will pull the entire selection into the 3D the same amount. When you finish the extrusion, it consumes the sketch. See how Sketch 1 has been replaced by Extrusion 1? If we want to add more features to our design, we repeat the steps Make a Sketch, Draw a Closed Shape, and Extrude. Let's look at what makes for a good drawing for extrusion. We've already seen that a good drawing is made up of a closed shape, and has only the details that it needs. If we look back at this particular cartoon character and try to extrude it, we can see that if we click all the parts, we only extrude a rectangle. If I don't select all the parts, I have holes that go all the way through my part. This means I spend a bunch of time putting on features on one sketch that will have been better on multiple sketches. Let me demonstrate. I first draw the outside of the character and extrude it. Then I can start a new sketch. I'm going to draw the eyes and the mouth features. Once I have drawn those drawn, I can extrude them. This looks much more like what I envisioned when I drew this. Just bef like before, every time I extrude, it consumes the sketch. Let's look at the extrude tool a little more closely. There are a series of boxes. The first box is what I want to extrude. I can select multiple closed shapes and all will be extruded the same distance. Another important box is how much I want to extrude. The bigger the number, the more that will be extruded. Lastly, there is a Boolean section. This lets me decide whether I'm making a new solid or cutting into an existing solid. Let's revisit the character. If I right click on the second extrusion, I can select Edit Feature. This let me change how this drawing is being made 3D. I'm going to change my selection from Create Solid to Cut. Notice how the shape has turned red. This indicates that it is going to cut away anywhere if it touches a solid. If my red shape doesn't touch any solid, then it won't do anything, so I need to make sure it intersects with my existing solid. Now, I can make the eyes and mouth be cut in. Because I am doing this in one step, the eyes and the mouth will be extruded the same distance. If I want the mouth to be extruded more or less than the eyes, I would need to put the mouth on a separate sketch and do a separate extrude. There are some other neat features in the extrude tool, but we're going to leave those for another time. Let's try making a name tag. This will let us practice making multiple extrusions. I have an image here of what we are going to try and make. Just like when we are learning to break down drawings into simpler shapes, it makes sense to draw the largest, largest shapes first. I'm going to draw the outside rectangle. First, I start a 2D sketch and then draw my rectangle. I want it to be keychain sized, so 20 by 60 millimeters is a good starting point. That is all I need for this sketch, so I will click Finish Sketch and Extrude it. I want this to be 3 millimeters, and I can type that here. I click OK, and I have my first solid. The next solid I want to make is my name and a border to go around it. I need to make a sketch, and I'm going to click the surface that I want my next feature to be on, my name and border. Then I can use the Rectangle tool to draw the outside edge, then another Rectangle tool. I want my border to be 2 millimeters wide. I can use the dimension tool to set that width. I'm going to put my name. I can use the text tool to place my name. I want my name to be 13 millimeters tall, which I can set in this box. Depending on the plane, I might need to use the rotate tool so that the text goes in the right direction. With my border and text done, I can click Finish Sketch and click the Extrude tool. I will select my border and the text, and then extrude 2 millimeters. The last thing this keychain needs is a hole to go onto the keychain. I can make this hole by creating a sketch and drawing a circle. The diameter of the circle isn't super critical, so I will eyeball it. I can click Finish Sketch, then Extrude. This time I want to use the Cut operation and make sure that is going to cut into my name tag. With one last OK, I can be done with this design. But wait! I have all this extra space at the end of my name. 
I can go into previous sketches and make changes. The overall size of the name tag was set in my first sketch and first extrusion. If I right click extrusion 1 and select edit sketch, I can change the dimensions. My box is too long, so I'll try changing that 60 millimeters to 40 millimeters. I can do this by double clicking the dimension I wish to change. When I click finish sketch, I should see that change take place. Neat. Looking down this model browser, we can see that there is an extrusion 1, extrusion 2, and extrusion 3. Each one of these was one of the steps into my design. Just like I changed the length of the tag, I can change the length or size or shape of any one of these extrusions and have that change trickle down through time.